This is your brother Farouk Hunter, the founder of the Freedom Nation. And today we're going to actually go through a detailed presentation of what the Freedom Nation is, the problems that we're trying to solve, the methods that we're using to solve them, so that you can evaluate exactly what value the Freedom Nation has to you and your life. You know, I'd like to start out with just explaining two words. Two words that if you're an African American, Black American, you are oh so too familiar with. The two words are Black tax. Now for those of you who aren't familiar with what the Black tax is, Black tax is the amount in excess that you have to pay in order to reach the same outcomes and the same levels of output and success that your white American counterparts can achieve with much less. Now the idea of a black tax, a taxation that's put on you simply because of the color of your skin, because of how you were born, right? And let me stop for a second. It doesn't matter if you uh, consider yourself to be some other type of, you know, American, Caribbean, American, this, that, blah, blah. No, it's just simple to be said that people of color, especially in the United States, with a specific background tied to slavery, tied to Jim Crow laws, and tied to a legacy of lynching and policing, have undergone a certain level of torment that has still not released them to this day. The black tax is something that is relevant to those individuals. Those individuals, I myself being one of them, have always had to strive much harder to achieve the exact same safety, peace, and prosperity that has been promised for so long to our white counterparts. It's a concept of absolute ludicrousy. So if you're familiar with, I'm going to hip you if you're not, if you're familiar with Maslow's hierarchy of laws. This is a basic study about the human nature and what the human has to achieve before they can achieve higher levels of success. The highest level of success being the ability to self-identify, to be able to shape your own character as you see fit, to feel free to be yourself and express yourself, which we know at that height is when people start to innovate, create, and do amazing things. But before getting there, Maslow talks about the need for safety. And when you look at where safety ranks on Maslow's hierarchy pyramid, it's a very low and basic sense concept. It means that if you can't feel safe, you'll never achieve the maximum output. You'll never achieve your maximum glory. You'll never take advantage of maximum benefit. So it means that because of this concept of the black tax, I'm not even going to discuss all the reasons why it exists. It's just enough that we know no matter how successful you've been, no matter where you're from in the United States, if you are a black American, you know it's real. Because it's real, you will never achieve the absolute height of your abilities. It is a limiting factor that is always in place. In the most simplest of terms, the Freedom Nation exists in order to create environments where the black tax is no longer a concept that is in our daily lives. Where we as a people, by birthright, are facilitated with a successful, peaceful, opportunistic environment that offers us the highest levels of prosperity. Now, with that said, the question might go, what is the Freedom Nation in more detail? Well, in order to understand that, I have to introduce something else. This is the Principles of Freedom. Now, the Principles of Freedom is a collection of absolute rules that are necessary to create freedom.
Why freedom? Why is the word freedom so important? Because anybody who is not living according to their own laws, their rules, or laws and rules that they have completely and utterly agreed to on their own will is enslaved. They are being forced to do things outside of their will and desire. They are being told that they have to achieve their goals in life only at a tax. Freedom is when you can work towards those things in your life that you want without paying that tax. So it makes sense that we focus on the principles of freedom if we want freedom. If you don't know the basic principles, the ideas, the construct, the science to freedom, how can you ever achieve it? It's one thing to know it. And I behoove you. We give this book away for free online. You should go online and you should download it. Or you can go on to our website and you can order the actual physical book. I behoove you to read it. Because in the book, The Principles of Freedom, once you define the science of a thing, the mechanism, the how it works, then you have a responsibility if you want that thing, if you want that thing to happen, to build a machine that can produce according to those principles. The Freedom Nation is that machine. What's unique about a machine? A machine is not just a couple of people who've gotten together and decided to do something. A machine is not some idea that we have on the weekends. A machine is a refined, process oriented mechanism, construct, invention that has continuous and consistent output every single time. That's a repetition. But that's what the Freedom Nation is. It's an engine. It is putting structure and refinement to the idea of black American freedom. I can tell you with absolution that amongst all the organizations we've had in our past, there have been some that have been truly revolutional. There have been some that have been amazing with amazing leaders, but all have fallen short to creating a professional system to ensure your freedom. That now exists in the Freedom Nation. Now, there's no need for us to then explain why that has to exist, as far as why do we need an engine for freedom. But what probably does need to be explained is why is it that it has to be an engine? Why can't it just be some people who wake up in the morning and say, I want to do it? It's for one simple reason. Freedom's hard. It's really hard, man. I'm, let me tell you as straight as I can, it's not easy to change everything that's going on around you, to break the construct, the matrix, however you want to refer to it. It's not easy to break that apart. Let alone, see, breaking apart is a destructive goal. We have no destructive goal. We have productive goals, and our productive goals are to assemble, acquire, build, populate, and grow and prosper. As much as we would like to think that our willpower is enough to get up and do that, it's not. Let me explain. You know this already, even if you don't admit it to yourself. When you go and you say, I'm going to go from here or Atlanta, all the way up to New York. And I'm going to do it on sheer willpower alone. So let's start with one scenario. What if your legs don't work? You're going to get there. But it'll take you a very, very, very long time. And your life and your energy and everything else might give out way before you get there. And you'll have to pay attention to so many things on the way. My arms hurt. I got calluses on my hands. These things, that's the reality of life. On second hand, if you had your legs, you could say, I could run, I'm going to walk. Well, willpower will do a lot for you then. Stick in. But while you're running and you're walking, 
If you got a wife and the kids back in Atlanta, they're not eating, most likely. So then life want to kick you in the butt again. If you have a bicycle, a little faster, motorcycle. But if you got a really good car that can just gun straight out, not only can you reach it from Atlanta to New York an ideal amount of times in the course of a single day with minimal impact to your life, destruction of your world, but you can also take people with you. That's the power of building a machine. Freedom Nation is a machine to freedom. I hope you can get that concept. It's a machine to freedom. It's that Maserati. And every single day we refine it, we tweak it, we build it up more and try to find ways to get you there quicker and to make sure you stay there and you can sustain yourself when you get there. So it's to be said that Freedom Nation is made up today in its center of a professional management firm. This is run by professional project and product and program managers. Right. That's very important. These are people who've worked in the most successful organizations who have developed process and process engineering in those spaces and now refined it into a system of freedom. That's important to know that. Outside of that management structure, that refined management structure, which we hold has what we call the golden standard. We then expand that golden standard out to the subsidies. So Freedom Farms, Freedom Village, Freedom Builders. All of these organizations have been refined in a very specific way in order to make sure that they achieve one of the key goals necessary to get you to freedom. However, they've been done so under a management company that ensures that output is consistent. There are daily meetings. There are weekly touch points. There is weekly reporting. There are assessments of the individuals doing the work. People are held accountable to ensuring that your freedom is real and it really gets done. So I told you that this was a presentation about the Freedom Nation. And normally if you hear me talk, it's all about some of the philosophical concepts. But see, today I want to talk to you about how we get it done, how we really get there and how we fill the gap that you have. This is the second part of why it's needed. See, in our lives, we're just trying to survive. For as much as we're trying to prosper, every day we wake up, we have to eat. We have to sleep somewhere. We have to go through our daily lives. To ask a person to simply walk away without subsidizing all those other things is an impossible ass. We can't do it. We cannot do it. Even those of us who feel like we can just break out and go on some land will find ourselves not being able to sustain ourselves. Our early experiments in the Freedom Nation were just like that. We took people out into a piece of land and we tried it. It didn't work. They couldn't sustain that lifestyle. Even with food and water and everything else, they couldn't sustain it. It's, it's hard. It's hard. I'm not going to joke with you. It's hard. So this is why we decided to develop the engine. So that we could make sure that your freedom would be consistently moving to the outcome you want while you sustain your life in this current condition without massive disruption. Let me say that again, because that's important to understand about the Freedom Nation. It, the engine exists so that you do not have to disrupt your life in order to achieve freedom. That's the beauty of being what we call a freedom citizen. So the question would be, if this engine exists and it's here to ensure that black American, African American, so-called African American people can reach the height of safety, peace and prosperity, then the question would be, A, what things do we have to now tackle in order to make that available for you? So what problems does the machine fix? 
What are the actual diagnosis of your issues, of your situation that does not provide freedom today? And then very specifically, how do we solve those problems? So I'd like to go into just the basic construct of thinking about what an environment is. I want to put you into this mindset of an environment. Environments come in different shapes and sizes. One thing that's very interesting about an environment is that we're always trying to create it. When you are born, when you are put in your mother's womb, you are in an environment of safety, right? For a baby inside of a belly, it's filled with cushy fluid. There's a nice cord feeding you food on a consistent basis. If your mother's attentive, then you can hear the sounds of lullaby. You have the rhythmic beating of her heartbeat that soothes you. The environment was created to ensure that you could come into the world in the best way possible, to nurture you from an almost non-recognizable substance into a full-grown and effective human being that could enter the world and then begin to grow in the world itself. But see, like a mother's womb, an environment is subject to other environments. A mother's womb is subject to the environment she sits in. Let's say she's not a smoker, but she sits in a place where people smoke. Regardless of the sanctity of this environment, it will become polluted and diluted over time. If she's sitting in a place where people use harsh words and harsh language, where they treat her poorly, where they're not kind to her, then even internally, certain things will happen to break down the womb, to break down the structure, to make it an unsafe place. See, our environments are like that. We go in and we are diligent human beings, amazing human beings. We, despite anything else going on around us, try to create environments that can coddle our families and our children and our ideals and our hopes. But without changing the environment around us, we jeopardize the sanctity of the environment inside. Now, in Freedom Nation, we call this the internal environment. This is the one you live in. This is the one you own. This is the one you create the rules for. Freedom Nation seeks to expand the internal environment of the African American, the Black American, uh, so-called Black American. I have to say that every time almost. It wants to expand that environment, but not just simply in one way. First, real rule, Real world rules apply. In the real world, we have to acquire physical land in order to expand your environment. The land you own is what you can consider to be your free environment if you choose to make it free. That's the second topic. But in your internal environment, it will always be encapsulated with what we call, call the external environment. Just like the mother with the womb, her external environment, the baby's external environment, is whatever his mother subjects him to. So the first object of the Freedom Nation is to deal with the issue of the construct itself, the internal environment. We have to build an excellent internal environment, right? That's number one. Freedom Builders and our land acquisition companies are take money that the founders of Freedom Nation, myself included, earned by doing computer programming work, by running management firms, by taking on successful contracts, basically our entire life earnings, and use it to acquire lands that can then be a part of the Freedom Nation, establishing the internal environment. But like a good mother, right, we would call a mother great 
if she makes sure her external environment is also excellent. So we look to build these internal environments in places where they have the highest chance for success. Where the government entities that control them give us the autonomy necessary to manage and govern and run ourselves without conflict. And where there are no exponential or existential threats against us with inside that internal environment. Uh, think about it as a buffer. That's a huge part. It takes years for the Freedom Nation to find the right place to put our construct, which is called the Freedom Village. Right? That's the internal environment within the Freedom Nation is the Freedom Village. Then I want you to think bigger. Outside the external environment, we have what we call the exponential environment. Now, this is the environment around the environment that directly impacts your environment. When you think about the exponential environment, let's just break it down. Let's say that you decide to have a small place in a city. That city exists in a county. County exists in a state. State exists in the country. Country exists in a continent. Those continents, countries otherwise exist, large bodies like the United Nations, so forth and so on. So you are always, you will always, as long as you exist on Earth itself, you will always be subject to these different environments. Now, the Freedom Nation does something different to attack the exponential environment. We create spaces of value. That's so important. So the Freedom Nation is not a movement just to run away into some place, close the doors, and then not look back. It then has to become a lot more. We have to put that professional engine together in order to try to churn out economic success and prosperity to deliver value to our exponential and external environments at a level where they understand that us being there is more significant than us not being there. And there's examples of this. Take, for instance, the Quakers. Or we can take uh, the Jewish ghettos in Italy. I like that one. That's a great one. See, the word ghetto, unbeknownst by some of us, didn't come from some construct in the black community. The first time the word ghetto came about was in Italy. It was the name given to the spaces where the Jewish people had to live. Now, whether you like Jewish people, you don't like them, that opinion is not necessary right now. What's important is it's an example of how a people who were put down were able to stand up and stand up in such a way where almost no one can put them down, right, without a huge level of sacrifice. But at the time, these people were vulnerable, extremely vulnerable. It wasn't even allowed for the Jewish people to live amongst other Italians. You could not live in traditional European life if you were a Jew. So you were given these ghettos, which is why they put us in ghettos, because they had already worked the concept out. But unlike the Jews, the Jewish people had a couple of people, right? In those ghettos, you had, keep up with me, Goldman from Goldman and Sachs. You had the Rothschilds. And these were houses, entire houses, Inside the ghetto where multiple families live. See, there's not one family. There are multiple families live, and they called the house by that, like a ghetto in a ghetto. But in there, they decided to make moves to control and create an international financial system. They saw that avenue to do something that was so unique, so needed, so valuable, that as the statement made by one of the Rothschild brothers, I don't care who controls the country. As long as I control your money, then I control. See, this is value we're talking about. So the Freedom Nation tries then to create this section of value inside the Freedom Village. So that we as a people aren't just considered as someone who then ran away, but someone who actually consolidated themselves in order to create an engine of value for the exponential and external environments in totality, and even the distant environments that we don't find ourselves within. That's a very unique proposition. And it requires a lot of work 
a lot of organizations and a lot of calculations. The first of which has to be a building company. Because without infrastructure, we can't do anything. So we created Freedom Builders. With Freedom Builders, we went to almost 38 different countries to identify ways to build materials where we could control the development of our infrastructure. Now, I'm originally from Tuskegee, Alabama. My great grandmother was one of the original students at Booger T. Washington's Tuskegee University. So the idea of brick making is coursing through my veins. So it's of no coincidence that Freedom Builders is a brick maker. It is one of the very few brick makers that are black owned in the entirety of the United States. And we have a unique fix. We take brick and we use the material on the ground from our sites to make our brick. We also mill lumber. We make our own cabinets, our own doors, our own floorings. And we even make our own plasters. And day by day, we try to figure out how to do more. Now that has dual benefits. One I'll cover a little bit later about the value of actually creating your own building material and what that does so that you can finance, okay? Self-finance with no interest, the purchases of people trying to live in the Freedom Village. I'll go through that later. The financing piece is so important. But right now, just Freedom Builders by itself, Freedom Builders, is an amazing structure that can build the infrastructure that we need in order to achieve the environment that provides us with safety, peace, and prosperity as black or African-American, so-called African-American people. In addition to that, we understand that there's a need for food. Who doesn't understand there's a need for food? You know, Freedom Nation, in the Principles of Freedom, I'll show it again, we cover this concept of needs. And inside here, there are two needs. There's what we call the essential need, right? What is an essential need? An essential need is what you need to just basically survive, right? You need a essential needs to survive. What is that? Food, oxygen, water, we can't ignore these things. These are our base core needs, our essential needs, we call them. And I know you can't read that. But then also we have our core needs. So let's talk about this key essential element of freedom. That is your needs. Now we have essential needs and core needs. Essential needs is, or defined by the principles of freedom, as those needs that you cannot do without in order to sustain basic life. Food, water, and arguably shelter can be considered to be a essential need. Core needs are those things that we use to define our life in the way we see fit, right? One person might say, I need electricity. Uh, even though electricity in itself is not mandatory for life, we might not want to live a life without it. Another person might need a certain level of automation or access to certain tools or cooking utensils in order to have their core needs. And these are things that are important to you. So Freedom Nation has developed these two sides of business. One satisfies the essential needs. And wherever there's an essential need, we also have built a form of financing for those needs. Because we believe that these things should be readily accessible to African-American people. How else can you have a prosperous life if you have to think you work for 10, 20 years without ever being able to partake of things like shelter and food and water? In that, we implement a concept called Know Your Products. And not just know your products, know where they're from, know who made them, know how they were made. And in this, we've built Freedom Farms, we've built Freedom Builders, 
Freedom Builders makes the materials that go in your house. We are a building material manufacturer as well as a builder. That means that when you build a house out of Freedom Building materials, you know exactly where they came from, exactly what was put in them, and exactly how you're living your life. You live your life right now. You've got that sheetrock on your walls. You've got timber and wood behind it that you have no idea what it was treated with. No idea of what you're sucking into your breath and your lungs on a daily basis. You right? So definitely to be free, knowledge is one of the key things. And having knowledge of where your essential needs come from is something that we take very seriously as a point of absolution for freedom. Secondly, Freedom Farms. Now, we're happy to say that Freedom Farms now manages just over 100,000 acres of land. Yeah, you heard that right. 100,000 acres of land. And we plant everything from cherry tomatoes to wheat. And we make this available to our Freedom Citizens. Ah, so now we come to the point where we say, what's a freedom citizen? What is a citizen of the freedom nation? How is it that we have these essential elements of survival, these essential needs in these organizations, freedom farms, freedom builders? But then we say we only make them available to our freedom citizens. No, it's not available to the masses. It's available to those who've committed to changing their life in this way. So this begs, what do we call a freedom citizen? How do you become one? Well, I'm going to get into that. But let's also cover the core need concepts. Our core needs, those things we want to identify with, you know, there's a, a very long line. If you were to stop right now in your house, which I suggest you do, stop for a second. Look at the computer that you are sitting right now looking at. Let's start right there. That screen on the computer, this one, okay? This screen is made out of substance called idiotin tin oxide. It is the little crystals in between the layer of glass or plexiglass that you're viewing and that you can touch and put your finger on. Behind that, there's a control pad with electricity that then changes the properties of those little diodes. Now, until I told you that, I would guarantee you 99% of people have never heard what idiom tin oxide is in their life. It is a substance that is mined mostly in Africa and China. That substance comes straight, I mean, like literally when I say mine, I mean, ting, 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 they take it right out of the mines. They break it into a piece, process it, and put it up. Have you ever seen a mine for idiom tin oxide? Have you ever seen the process? Now, this isn't the hack at you. This is to say how little we know about the things that we use on a daily basis. And you know the funny thing? We don't always need to know. But someone we know needs to know. Because if they don't, then how can we control it? How can we depend on that in our life? We don't have to control every element, but we need to be able to say the thing that I have made my life. I say it's a core need for me. I need it in my life to exist. I have some control of where it comes from. I know the people who put it together. I know where the core stuff comes from. Or else you risk the supply being taken from you by people who don't care about you, don't like you and don't know you. And that don't make no sense. So for core needs. What Freedom Nation has done is to expand, to go beyond just one simple construct of a single environment and to think through the full expansion of what we must do in order to control the flow of goods into our life. Now, this is where I introduce a concept that's relevant to the world, a little number that you might not know. 95% of all transactions happen outside the United States. 95%. Now, did I say that alone? You can look it up. You can research it. Hell, Obama said it. 
So although we are the highest consuming nation on the planet, 95% of the things that happen to provide those things happen outside the U.S. It even goes so much that 50%, right? At any given time, there is a currency, liquid currency in the U.S. of 1.8, 1.2, 1.3, it shifts, trillion dollars. But at all times, that liquid currency, 50% is outside the U.S., making deals, moving around, doing what it does. So you put that together and you believe that somehow you're going to create a little space in the U.S. to have freedom? No, you won't. You got to think bigger. And this is that point where we start to talk about the new black reality. And in that reality, we have our hands to access everything that is important in our life from its original maker. And we have our own, our own deals, treaties, and trade agreements. That's not radical, it's real. So Freedom Nation has done a little more. What we did is we identified the entire flow of key products in this world. Now, typically you have what you call hubs, where several things feed into a hub, and then it goes out from that hub. And you also have what's called corridors. Between two trade hubs or manufacturing hubs, you have the path they have to follow. So you have consolidation and then transportation. When you operate in a hub, Dubai, Shanghai, okay, high expense, you're in competition with everybody. Whenever you want to strategically have access to a hub, you should find the point of minimal resistance that is the most significant point. And this are called economic corridors. So the Freedom Village construct has been developed inside the key economic corridors of the world. In Kazakhstan, where I'm shooting this video from my office at, we're developing the Freedom Village on the Chinese border in Kazakhstan, in the free trade zone, the only free trade zone on the Chinese border. Making our citizens have access directly, not only to China, Kazakhstan, all of Eurasia, but giving us the ability to negotiate our terms because the free trade agreement supersedes anything else that might be happening in the world between these burgeoning powers, per se, that are fighting each other and then causing taxation that hurts us. Instead, the Freedom Village offers a very unique position to African-American people to control the supply directly from its source and build our own relationships. In addition to that, we've targeted Djibouti. Oh, if you don't know, look it up. It is the only free trade zone in all of Africa. Gives you direct access to the entire African intertrade, zero tariff, zero limitation, zero taxation, trades between ECOWAS. And look that up, I'm giving you titles, right? In addition, it gives you access to what's called the Baba Mandab. Right? We all were aware maybe several months ago from the time of shooting this video, when the big ship Evergreen actually wedged itself in the Swiss Canal. We were told that the prices would go up in, in our stores, that things would change for us financially for almost up to a year based on a three week blockage. It's because the Swiss Canal has always been a key corridor. The Swiss Canal, the Golden Key, the Baba Mandab, the Strait of Malacca, the Panama Canal, and the Strait of Gibraltar. Look them all up. They're extremely key. You cannot ship without them. So the Freedom Nation has intentionally started to place itself in these key strategic areas to be in line with the growth and expansion of the world and to have direct negotiating power for how we get the things that flow through those areas. It's a power move, man. 
is changing the whole situation. I wish I could explain it more. I wish I could tell you more, but I'd sit here for hours trying to give it to you. Maybe in one of our lives, you can join us and you can see it. So this construct, this environment of the Freedom Village needs to exist in every place that we need leverage, that we need to create the lifestyle that we want to have true freedom and develop the new black reality, which is freedom. So now that I've kind of covered that part and the understanding of the fact that the Freedom Nation, just to recap a little bit, the Freedom Nation exists to rid ourselves of this idea of a black tax, to give us peace, prosperity, and safety in our life, in our environments, by creating environments of peace, safety, and prosperity that are controlled by us, run by us, and supplied by us. And in order to ensure that supply, in order to ensure that prosperity, we do things to build an economy of value to our external and exponential environments while increasing the quality of life internally. And we place the freedom villages throughout the world in key places where we can have access to the flow of products and services directly at their source, regardless of where they are in the world. So we don't have to bow down to anyone else's control of those elements. With that said, I'll repeat again, all of that is available to Freedom Nation citizens alone. So this then brings us to the question, what is a Freedom Nation citizen? Now, Freedom Nation is not what we call a state de facto. Now, a state de facto is a legal term on an international level that speaks about it speaks about a country that is recognized by other countries in the world. We are not that, and at the current time, we're not trying to be that. So citizenship simply is an agreement to be a part of the Freedom Nation, to allow the Freedom Nation to represent you and your needs, and to work together as a team to come to the absolute outcome that you want to achieve, which is freedom. So when you become a freedom citizen, you sign what's called a teaming agreement. This agreement is a basic legal framework, it doesn't force you in anything, it's just a basic legal framework that says our relationship. We are the Freedom Nation, we are project managers. We are a professional organization that will help you do what you want to do, which is acquire new property, services, build businesses, and access the world by your own terms. And we will help you to represent you in whatever way possible that we agree upon in order to get that done. That's a freedom citizen. A freedom citizen is someone who's basically signed that agreement and said that this is how they would like to work with the Freedom Nation to achieve these goals. If a freedom citizen is someone who has entered into a teaming agreement Whereas they are the acquirer of real estate, they are the acquirer of services, they are building businesses, they are establishing their family inside of these environments of freedom. And the Freedom Nation is a project manager or a professional organization that facilitates all of those acquisitions and the maintenance of those acquisitions, the management of those acquisitions, the monitoring, and the positive outcomes. Then the question would be next, logically, who can become a freedom citizen? Well, I think by this point, I hope I've made it clear that our entire organization is built for African-American, black Americans. However, there's room for other people, but only under one condition. Our mission, our basic standing, our key law 
is that black people have to be in control over their own future. That our construct, by our choice, and there's not a single law in the world that can stop it, that we choose our owners, our leaders, and we choose them to be African-American people. In that, we're welcome to anyone else who wants to come and fall underneath that construct. Experience has told me from running the Freedom Nation for seven years now, that typically by making that statement, it ensures that the majority of our citizenry will be the people who we intend to impact. And anyone else who joins that citizenry will be someone of aid to getting us to that goal. So now that we're clear on what a Freedom Nation citizen is, what makes you a Freedom Nation citizen, you know, we need to talk about what are the benefits of citizenship. Because we should never ever assign ourselves to something if we don't derive a unique benefit. This is not a, a charity, okay? This is your life. This is our life. This is our business. It's so important to say that. Let me say it again one more time. Freedom Nation is not a charity. It doesn't seek out volunteerism. It doesn't raise money without a specific exchange of goods for what it, not raising money, sold to someone. Because when we build our future, when we build the thing that's important to us, the construct that we have to live on, there is no way in God's name it can be built on handouts. And oh, I know, there's some of you that will say, oh, Farouk, you know, you're being too hard. It's not handouts. People just want to help out. Let me tell you something. Very clear. Best way you want to do a transaction has to do with anything that you get in this world. Sell something. I sell you something, you take it. I get back what you gave to me. Finish. I owe you nothing. As African-American people, we got to get used to that. I owe you nothing. What I did for you is done. You ain't got no ways to come back and try to tell me what you done for me, right? Because you didn't. I did for you. You did for me. We traded. I owe you nothing. You owe me nothing. So Freedom Nation, very clear, always thinks about how do we provide value for anything we take in. Now, for the Freedom Nation citizenry, we become partners under the teaming agreement. And then the Freedom Nation gives you access to all the tools and the programs that have been put in place to ensure your freedom. One of the biggest things that you gain access to is 0% low down payment financing for key essential needs. You know, I'm, I probably need to say that one more time. One of the greatest things that the Freedom Citizen gains access to is 0% financing with low down payments, short terms for essential needs like housing, like access to food stores, purchasing of land, and there's more. Even the acquisition of services. Let me show you kind of how this works. The Freedom Nation goes out with its own monies, okay? Not borrowed, not driven through some kind of fundraiser, but money earned by the owners of the Freedom Nation through their work in exchange for services and goods. And then that money, instead of putting it into a bank, instead of sticking it between the mattresses, the founders of the Freedom Nation have instead decided to acquire things that are of value to our people as they move towards a life of freedom and what we would like to call the new black reality. Now in that, the first acquisition is land. 
The second was tools in order to build things that can be built on the land. But let's take land and then let's take buildings just as the base of this conversation. Freedom Nation citizens, for example, in Freedom Village, Georgia, gain access to 1.25 acres of land. That is enough land to legally build your structure, your home, or any other auxiliary buildings around your home that would give you that wonderful life that we're working so hard towards for $5,000. Some people can't come out five grand. So what we do at our own expense is say, put a thousand dollars down. Now that you can work towards. As a matter of fact, you can work at McDonald's for about a month and a half, two months, get a thousand dollars, stay with your mama and pay that. So no excuses as to who can't pay something that low. And then three hundred and twenty five dollars a month. For many people. $325, let me tell you what it boils down to. If you go out and you have a chicken sandwich for lunch five days a week with french fries and a drink for 10 bucks, that is a total of $200 a month. If you drive in your car at $40 a month a week to get back and forth, that's good gas prices. You got a good car. <laughs> that's almost another 200 so for the cost of driving to work and getting a chicken sandwich, you pay for your land. And in 12 months, you own it. That means a person who has no extra money to their name deciding for 12 months that they'll catch the bus to work and pack their own lunch. So I'm confident that we've made this core element. And our financing is an awesome thing that works. And 0% financing means that at the end of it, you paid only what it costs. You paid $5,000. You didn't pay $7,000, $10,000. You know, look, let's be straight. I'm a Muslim. This beard is here for a purpose. But behind this beard, in it, are the core principles of Islam which say that charging people interest is theft, is paramount to an evil practice. See, whether you agree with being Muslim or not makes no difference. You have to agree with this. And if you're paying for a house right now, oh, you really got to believe it. There is no more evil thing to do to a person than to charge them an exorbitant, expanding amount of money for borrowing money. And then in addition to that, taking your fee before you take the principal. It'd be enough that I would, would try to give you some incentive that if you paid it quick, you could be out of it. But you tell me I've got to pay you interest and interest payments. That's psychotic. I'm sorry, it's an evil practice. It was introduced by people who had an evil mindset. And it has no place in a nation of freedom and no place in a new black reality. Leave that behind, right? So when we finance and provide finance for freedom citizens, it's clean, direct, and honest financing to allow you to acquire key essential needs. Let's talk about your house. That's another product. Now, one of the things that we knew in the Freedom Nation, we had to do from day one, was to build a company we call Freedom Builders. I want to give you some background on Freedom Builders. You need to understand this. We literally travel to 38 countries in the world to identify how to do what we do at Freedom Builders. That's not to be taken lightly. That's not a joke. That's a humongous investment in both time, energy, and money. And we did. Founders of the Freedom Nation, even my own children, were involved in the process of not just going out to acquire and learn how to do these new things, but also testing them and building them for years. 
We thought it would be, and it absolutely is, ludicrous to think that you're going to build a house and you're going to build it up with wood, concrete, rebar, nails, fixtures, furniture, and you have no idea where it's coming from. And every time you go to tap it, you got to tap a person who's way down the chalk line. So here's a supply chain. I'm going to get my lumber from Lowe's or from a lumber yard that's buying from somebody else. I don't know what they've done with that lumber. I don't know what kind of chemicals they treat it with. Look, everything in this world starts to break apart over time. Basic science right, tells us entropy is the concept of the construct of things in this world and how it breaks apart. That's a basic concept of thermodynamics. When you take something that was composed of multiple pieces and stick it in your house, it starts to break down over time. The longer you live there, the more you ingest it into your body and it becomes a piece of you. So if someone wanted to kill you or mess with you or your children in absolution, put bad stuff in your sheetrock. Do you have any idea what sheetrock is? This thing that's on your wall, it's a layer of paper and a goo, a goo that's once just a watery mixture that anything can set itself in, microbes in the air, so forth and so on, whatever the people in, inside of there, spore, uh, uh, mold spores, and then it gets consolidated and pressed between two sheets and it's stuck on your wall. I call it sheet rock for that reason, it's sheet rock. And you have no idea where it came from. And even if you track down the factory, you don't know the conditions by which it was made. And even if you do, you don't have a clear sight to the one person you can go to personally, not just through the court, personally and say, hey, man, what'd you do with that? I need you to take care of that. So the Freedom Nation decided to solve that problem almost first, day one. We make our brick from materials from the site. We dig up the materials from God's earth ourself, and we process everything. We even get our cement from people that we know, the mountains that the lime came from, to break it down before it was processed into cement and given to us to make the bricks. We are one of the few, very few, black timber millers in the country, in the world for that matter. We cut down and mill our own trees. We make our own lumber and we control our lumber costs. Now between lumber, plaster, different kinds of concrete, brick, and a structural masonry home, that means a home built out of bricks, right? Not out of wood and then bricks on the outside. Rafters for your roof, your floorings, your cabinets, your molds. We took care of almost 65, 70% of the cost of your house. So that means that the Freedom Builders is able to actually produce all the materials that go into your home, which allows us to do something else for citizens, and that is extend financing for those materials. 15% is all that a Freedom Citizen pays to gain their materials, and then 10%, excuse me, and then a 10-year financing cycle. Why 10 years? You don't need 30. We don't add interest. If we sell you the materials at the price we sell them for, we're selling you the price we sell them for. And we're selling you materials, not the house. So we put a basic price of materials in there, typically $45 to $65 a square foot. And then we actually sell you the materials. And we give you the designs already approved. And as a part of that whole package, we give you the designs the, the, we'll take you to the commissioner and actually work out your permits and your licensing. And then we'll help to connect you with trustworthy people to provide the labor to build those structures. That's something unique for Freedom Citizens to gain access to such a program where you're not only being able to finance your home with no interest, but to do it with a really low initial payment and you know where every single product came from so that when you breathe in your house, 
You breathe things that you know from people you know. I can't imagine anything better. That you consume the air and then even from Freedom Farms. And that's a whole other conversation. But you basically can take in things like wheat. Don't underestimate wheat. You like pasta. At Freedom Nation, we make pasta. We make it from wheat and eggs, from chickens we know and fields we know. We make these things available to you. So that 60, 70, 80% of foods you consume come from places you know. And if you don't know the rest, then you need to just basically say, okay, the last 20%, I got an acre and a quarter, I'm going to do it myself. So that's one of the huge benefits of being a freedom citizen is access to this very unique financing and these very unique services to take care of your essential needs. Another very unique and key element of the freedom citizen is what we call the freedom plan. Now, this is something that is given to you for free. The moment you become a freedom citizen, we behoove you to take the time to create a freedom plan. I told you we were project managers. I told you we were program managers. So we're insistent that every freedom citizen fill out our online questionnaire. It's asking you things about your financial situation, things about your plans, your personal desires, what do you want to build? What businesses you want to create? How do you want to expand the life you want to live to retirement or definitely at least the life you want to live to freedom? And then it takes and calculates and help you structure a five year plan. One of our project managers actually involves his hands in it or her hands and helps us structure a professional plan for you to get from where you are today to the freedom that you desire. That's so important. Oh my goodness, that's so important. If you don't understand how important that is, then you have not tried to do this. Because if you've ever tried to do this, you'd understand that having a clear, <clears throat> clear plan that takes into account all the variables of your life, one of the questions on the freedom plan is, do you have an elderly parent? who you might have to take care of in so many years and that you would like to. So even understanding future things, the necessity to build family, all your ideas are in the freedom plan. And we like for every single freedom citizen to have a freedom plan because without it, you're just playing. And we're not here to play. We're here to make this a reality. For once in our history, we are here to ensure that there is a systematic process in place for our people to gain freedom when they desire it. So the freedom plan is essential. And as soon as you become a freedom citizen, if you finish that teaming agreement, you need to start working on your freedom plan. It is the core of your future and your transition. Once you have your freedom plan in place, it is an amazing thing to have someone in charge of ensuring that you actually follow that plan. This is where the idea from Coach came from. Now, Coach is another freedom citizen or a professional within our office who has been trained to give you a call on a consistent basis and walk you through the next steps of your freedom plan. They want to make sure you succeed. So this person will be consistent. will talk to you about just understanding your life a little more and the things that impact you and impact your ability to follow that plan and give you constant suggestions and remedies on how you can adjust or take tactical adjustments with the freedom plan to ensure that you reach the level of freedom that you desire. I'd like to kind of go now and revisit the concept of where the Freedom Nation is. Freedom Nation is meant to be a set of autonomous environments that are linked through a single professional organization and citizens reaching a similar goal. 
These autonomous environments are located in specific areas that give its citizenship access to create its own relationships, its own trade deals, its own mechanisms for ensuring that its essential and core needs are met of the citizenship, the citizenry. <laughs> so in that, we have strategically placed the freedom villages inside of economic corridors. Very important for you to understand economic corridor. I'm going to introduce two concepts to you right now. One, what an economic corridor is. And two, one of the largest projects in the world in our lifetime, actually in the world's entire lifetime from a cost standpoint, that is actually shaping what the economic corridors of the future are. Now, in the United States of America, we have some key corridors. And here, they've always been key. Even if you haven't paid attention, they're always key and always have been. See, I like the city of Atlanta. I live there. I'm from Tuskegee, Alabama, and Atlanta was always the big town when we were growing up. And going to Atlanta was always exciting. Living in Atlanta, which I believe to be one of the black meccas of the United States, is a very interesting proposition. But very, very few people know why Atlanta exists. See, Atlanta is a key hub. When there was a need to bring <clears throat> the railroad from the south up to the north and from the east, from the west to the east, there needed to be a crossing point. That crossing point was Atlanta. Big cities in the United States are only created around the necessity for key hubs. Those key hubs offer unique propositions like Atlanta, where the major railroads cross each other. And there's the ability to change things going east or west to things going north and south or vice versa. When you think about economic corridors, you have to think about something similar. Let's break the idea of a hub and a corridor. I, I explained this a little bit, but I want to get a little more. Dubai, Istanbul, these are hubs. New York is a hub. Uh, Houston is a hub. San Francisco is absolutely a hub. These are places where we consolidate things that come from various points of the country within a regional locale. So basically, if you are closer to San Francisco than you are New York, you don't try to leave the country to shipping through New York. You go through San Francisco. So you consolidate based on your, your regional uh, issues. When you consolidate to the hub, you then can create a distribution center. That distribution center usually will be a large port. By far, the largest ports in the United States, three, are in San Francisco, New York and New Jersey Port Authority, and Savannah, which is the third. Out of those ports, you can go into your Google, really helpful, go into Google and look for maritime traffic. Do a search for maritime traffic. Why maritime traffic? Because still to this day, no matter how advanced we think we are, the majority of our goods that come into our country come through the water and onto a train. So when you look at what comes into New York, New Jersey area, what comes into San Francisco Bay area, and then what comes into Savannah, and then you see how it connects and ports through the United States, there's something else key to think about. Yes, we have our hubs, but what else do we have? Well, hubs have consolidation of transportation corridors. So when you go to Atlanta and you go to ship west, you ship on the railroad, and then that connects to another hub that redistributes it down other corridors. Now you have key corridors and you have subsequent corridors. Subsequent corridors would be something that was inland that then takes it out to those key areas. 
whereas a key corridor would be where a hub comes in from externally and then is the main vein that then feeds it back up to the other key hubs. What we have done is to place the Freedom Village in key economic corridors of today and the future. One of them being the Savannah Atlanta economic corridor. Now that's the piece of land that it takes or the, the roads to bring something from Savannah ports up to the Atlanta. It's important that Atlanta has the busiest airport in the world. It has connecting points for east-west rail lines. And Savannah has access by water to leave out to key hubs like Tangier port to go south into South Africa, multiple ports in that way. And that's South Africa, excuse me, to South America, but also then also to leave out to South Africa too and go to Durban and Cape Town. So it's a key area. So is the New York port. These two ports are always key to the eastern starboard of the United States and shipping things in and out. Freedom Village, if you took Atlanta and Savannah and you did this, you'd find Freedom Village, Georgia directly in the middle. Even so, it wasn't enough. We went around to all the little middle points, Milledgeville, Statesville, Macon. But in each one, we couldn't find conditions that were favorable to African-American people. So this is the second point about where the Freedom Villages are located. They are located in the key economic corridors where there are favorable terms for African-Americans to build environments. That takes a lot of work. It took a lot of work. We used to do it all the time, and we're still doing it. It took us three years to find out where to put Freedom Village, Georgia. It took us another six years to find out where to put the first international Freedom Village inside of Kazakhstan on the Chinese border. But you can ensure that every time you hit a Freedom Village, all of the variables have been thought through to make sure this is a key place, not just for a peaceful life, but for a prosperous life as well. So in that, without over explaining, I'll explain another humongous corridor development event. Let's backpedal just a teeny bit. You know, before all of the things that put us in our current condition went down, we were a set of people that were in various different levels of class and society, but definitely living up under our own rule. The bad and the good was our own cause. One of our key elements as Africans, Africans in totality, was to trade along the Silk Road. The Silk Road was a key pipeline between Asia and Africa. It also was a key pipeline between Af Asia and Europe, or Eurasia. I mean, if you haven't realized, Europe's not much of a continent. Eurasia is. It's proper to say Eurasia and Africa. This is proper. Now, the Silk Road was an ancient road that stretched from China, it started by the Chinese emperor, into Europe and various points of Europe and into Africa. It used to be an arduous task to travel the Silk Road. People would have whole events for their families when they left. Guys would go three, four, five years. Most of the things you read about and you know about were impacted or came from the Silk Road. When you hear about traders and people coming through the Arabian Peninsula, spreading things like Islam and Christianity, spreading even to the core, right? Even when you look in Rome, and you see the Arc de Triomphe, this big structure that has in it Palestinians coming into Rome to bring their goods and their wares. These are all products of things going along the Silk Road. Egyptians, everybody that we hold to value in African history had to use the Silk Road. Mansa Musa launches great trip and campaign across the Silk Road. As long as it stood, it meant that kingdoms could exist 
and trade freely with each other and negotiate their own terms. The key thing of colonialism was to shut down the Silk Road. It was so important for Europeans to do things that encapsulated the Silk Road with war and restriction. Waterways, landways, they would come into a place and break down the structure so that when you came down that road, you had to stop and it no longer was a viable way to trade, which meant that you could not build a relationship from country to country. You couldn't have people to people solve their problems anymore. A hell of a tactic of war was to shut down the transportation lanes of the world and Europe went to war with the world. So lately, there's been a change. Over the last five to seven years, there has been a push towards what's called the New Silk Road, also nicknamed the BRI, the Belt and Road Initiative, or OBAR, the One Belt, One Road. Listen to me, no matter what you hear in the news, there are some people who do not want to see it come back to life. And you best believe the folks who don't want to see it come back to life are the same ones who tore it apart the first time. And their reasons for not wanting to see it come back to life are the same reasons from the first time. And that's to keep you and me from being able to make our own deals and control our life. But since the Freedom Nation is hell-bent on ensuring, or should I say heaven-bent, on ensuring that we have access and control to negotiate our own futures, then we see the Silk Road and the establishment of it as one of the most significant key positive factors to creating the new black reality. This project is a 20, watch the word I'm about to use, trillion dollar project. 20 trillion dollar project. So you heard all kinds of numbers and everything else, but billion, you, ooh, billion, million, ooh, ooh, trillion. that has already expended $5 trillion to reestablish these key economic corridors collectively known as the New Silk Road. Along that, there have been some key points established. One is a place called Kargos. Kargos is on the border of China and Kazakhstan. It is an absolute necessity to take land trips from China you must cross through Kazakhstan. Kazakhstan is the seventh largest landmass as far as a country in the world. It has a small population, 18 million people. Yeah, I know. That's less than half of African Americans, much less than half of the counted African Americans for that matter, counted by the census, which we know is biased. But you have to pass through there and when you pass through there, you can make it from Kargos all the way to Germany in 11 days. You can make it all the way to London in 12. You can head down through Pakistan, through what's called CPEC or the Chinese-Pakistan Economic Corridor, and go to a little port called Gwadar or in Karachi. And you can dump directly out within three days into the UAE, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, and within five days, you can be at the port in Djibouti. Now Djibouti is a very interesting perspective. Look, Africa is the future, but it ain't gonna be the future by itself. It never was, it never will be. The Silk Road changed Africa a lot for the better. It will be an integral part in the future. And Africa must control its own, each African country, its own relationships with the rest of the world, not dictated by former colonizers. For us to be a part of that, we have to be in the same position. Djibouti is the eastern mouth of Africa. It has been changed into a free trade zone. And even though Djibouti has a small population, it has a direct train, just like Savannah into Atlanta, into Addis Ababa, with a population of 110 million of God's original creatures. 
where Eve herself came from. From Cargos, we can bring Asia into Africa in five days, and we could take Africa into Asia in five days. There's nothing like it on earth. So Freedom Village, Cargos, is already under construction. And Freedom Village, Djibouti, is under construction in the next two years, God willing. To give a timestamp, this is 2021 where we're making this video. So two years, hopefully you watch this later. We'll have to change it because it'll already be underway. We've already started the inroads systematically. Other key places. Remember, the United States wasn't even a country. Not recognized by anyone. It wasn't a state de facto. Until the Moroccan king decided that he would stop raiding the American ships and allow them to sail closer to Africa because to sail closer to Europe, they would have had to pay taxation on their ships. So they gained access to the Gibraltar, the Strait of Gibraltar, because the Moroccan king officiated the United States and recognized it as a country. And his authority was significant enough to make the United States a country for real. And it had not been before that black authority was given to them. I know he thinks about it sometimes. So the Strait of Gibraltar is always a necessity. So Freedom Village, we have been working in Marrakesh, Ben Greer, which is a small town set to test solar energy and other sustainable livings. We built, we built literally the most sustainable by award from the Moroccan king and from the U.S. Department of Energy. We built the most sustainable building in Africa in that test space. And we are also located in Freedom Village in Tangier, close to the Strait of Gibraltar. When you think about that strait, there's also the Swiss Canal. It's always been a point of contention. People have always wanted to gain access because it's the easiest way to get from the United States and over to open Asia. But if you don't want to play in the Swiss Canal, then it's enough to be in the Baba Mandab and the Strait of Gibraltar because nothing gets through the Swiss Canal unless it covers these two points. And that's the key strategic element of the Freedom Nation and Freedom Villages. There are other places like in South Africa and also future spaces like in Alaska and the Bering Strait. Barred that most African Americans don't want to be in that kind of cold, <laughs> to be honest with you. But as a key element, the Bering Strait and selling the Arctic as the polar ice caps melt is very significant. And at some point within the next five years, we're starting our project there. We've already started to buy land in Alaska. So this is the locational structure of the new black reality that gives us access to everything and all the movements of product and goods and people, as they so say in so many laws, goods and people throughout the earth and gives us the ability to negotiate our new future. Now, I'd like to kind of bellow a little deeper and talk about each of these villages. Because even though they're strategically and collectively part of something amazing, they each offer a unique kind of construct within themselves. Let's start with Freedom Village, Georgia. Freedom Village, Georgia is an amazing place. It's located in Hancock County, Georgia. Hancock County, Georgia is the poorest county in Georgia. Used to be the richest during slavery time because it was where the majority of the plantations were. So it's great that we're taking back that land, right? I know that makes you feel good. It makes me feel great. It has a population that is decreasing by 6 to 10% on an annual basis. The population is about six to 7,000 people, and there are a total of maybe 5,000 voters in the entire county. The elected official at the time that we're shooting this video, Sisty Hudson, is elected with just above 1,700 votes. Our wonderful commissioner of our area, Sam Reed, 
is elected with only 300 plus votes. As a place to settle and build an environment, bringing in 600 to 700 families of the Freedom Nation completely gives you the ability to have a say in every level, every level of the county, our external environment, and our Freedom Village. What happens in the village, as we grow that space, will determine what happens in the county. And I say that openly, and I say it positively, because it's a positive economic, prosperous construct that can only offer economic prosperity to its surrounding environments and a higher quality of life for everyone. Black excellence. Because when you take away the tax, you just have absolutely excellent people who have, can do better than most folks. When that extra amount is put towards something of value instead of being paid just in order to compensate for restrictions. In that town, there's a 3,000 acre space that's made up of multiple lands that Freedom Nation has started to purchase. As we purchase them, we segment them into small groups. We follow all the laws. We do all the surveys. We do everything to create what's called a land condominium. Land condominiums exist like a real condominium, like a, what you would think a real estate condominium. Real estate condominium, standing a large building. You ask yourself, how can the building be owned by someone else, but the unit to be owned by you? It's because what you're purchasing is the rights to occupy and the ownership of all the things, the essence of that space. Even if you don't own the structural column in your wall, you can't just take it out, right? You have full rights and no one can enter into that threshold without your permission. And you can reshape it as you see fit. With land, there's a legal construct that allows us to do the same thing. We, the Freedom Nation owns the land as a whole. And then you own your plot within the private property of the Freedom Nation. Why? Why is that important? Because law says that as long as this land and its rights of access are controlled by a single entity, no one has the right to vi violate that without clear cause and excuse um, that's set in, in that law. Now, given the fact that you have the ability to have a vote and a say on the laws of that county, and that only those laws can then give people access to that land, you're in one hell of an excellent position to ensure that your privacy as well as your exclusivity is maintained. Isn't that wonderful? I think that's amazing. That's Freedom Village, Georgia. And every land that we purchase, and you want the Freedom Village to do it, you want Freedom Nation to do it, because we purchase it, we make sure there's ample water, water pressure, we make sure that there's the access for utilities, and we ourselves extend the internet into these places. We high internet fiber optic cables that the citizenry, the citizenry, because uh, we have citizen partnerships as part of that teaming agreement, it's building businesses, as I said before, that allow us to then build towers and provide our own internet access inside of the Freedom Nation and inside the Freedom Village. So that's what Freedom Village Georgia is. Now it's sold in phases. We had a first phase that sold out in two days, 40 lots. We had another similar phase of another 38 lots sold out in less than two days, like three days. We finished the entire sale. We're now taking a backlist, right? We're asking people who want to be on the waiting list for phase three, which will be 125 lots, that you go ahead and pay half of your down payment, $500, and you'll be first in that list in accordance to when you pay and when you come in. And we will sell that lot to you and you get the first pickings the higher you're on the list. So the quicker you do it, the better pickings you get about living in this beautiful construct. As a citizen, as I said before, you gain access to all of our financing for your building materials. So we, as quickly as possible to build your house. And as a citizen, you've created your freedom plan. So you have a clear transition plan once you buy the land, how to get into the space. Amazing. I think it's amazing. 
First time I've ever heard it. It's awesome. Especially no interest, no games, no gimmicks. Straightforward business. Our people work out of trust because we earn their trust by doing good things in a right way. That's Freedom Village, Georgia. So if we're going to talk about Freedom Village, Georgia, we should kind of cover some of the steps. And we get the financing piece, but there's some things that you should consider when you talk about building your structure, building your home. The first I've kind of covered. Freedom Nation's got you covered. We identify water. <laughs> there's no life without water. We identify sources of food and things that you don't think about as quickly, which is the nearest source for medical care. Access to other people who have a profession to ensure that there's other viable services inside the village. This has been done for you. The second part is, how do you get your house up? Well, look, let me tell you about land. Because a lot of folks, I'm telling you, I love our people, but we too used to taking care of the grass. Cleared land is not the way. Let me say it again. Cleared land is not the way. Timber is valuable. In the United States, we build houses made of timber. In a Freedom Village, we build houses made of brick and timber. If you have trees on your land, beautiful hardwoods like poplar or white oak, ooh, if you got a white oak, and don't you dare have a cedar tree, and that beautiful yellow southern pine, you don't want to decimate that by just slicing it down. You want to work with the Freedom Nation. Have them come out, survey those trees that are on your property. Cut the right ones down. Restructure some of the other ones. That might mean cutting it down, replanting, readjusting. Help you make a plan for that land and then mill those different timbers to build your beautiful, popular based cabinets. Or a red oak table Ooh. that'll last for 100 years. Or build beautiful oak floors. Even if you want to get fancy enough, have a cedar sauna. Ooh, you ain't felt nothing till cedar heat up and let off that beautiful smell and then lets you and it just enriches your life. Whole body be smelling good and feeling great. Cleared land is not the way. Cleared land is cheap because they cut all the value off of it. And you got to wait 20 to 50 years to get it back. I would hope that we would all want to reach our goals a little quicker than that. So the majority of the land that we purchase is naturally planted land. Because whenever a timber company goes and plants the trees on its own, you pay for that. And it's very expensive, extremely expensive. So instead, you look for if the needles from another piece of land flew in or a twig through a storm came down and planted itself and it planted its own diverse trees in that area. Typical millers won't want to hear it because they like to have clear cut areas where they can just cut down a bunch of timber straight off. It's the easiest, cheapest way to make a lot of money. But those are low grow trees, right? Those are fast grow trees, excuse me, low quality fast grow trees. They usually plant them. They have them grow within 20 years. They get a circumference, I mean, excuse me, a diameter of about 12 to 18 inches. And this provides a certain amount of timber that you can measure. But the fibers are spaced out because of the fast grow. And they don't have the strength of some of the natural grown trees. So you take those natural grown trees and you build the foundations of your house. We show you how to do that. We give you the classes for free. Whenever you buy land from us, we always invite you to the annual retreat. We have an annual gathering of Freedom Citizens where we actually teach classes on how we make the brick, how we make lumber, how to understand the materials that are there and value all the things about your land. That's Freedom Village, Georgia. Once you become a part of Freedom Village, Georgia, and you're part of citizenry, we put you into our groups. We have some special closed groups for freedom citizens to communicate to each other. And this is where I mentioned something else that I think is amazing. 
Let me cover the concept of a tribe or a family within the Freedom Nation. Look, it's the Freedom Nation, not the Freedom, you know, house. It's meant to have multiple constructs, different people with different ideals, building their entire communities within the Freedom Nation and within the Freedom Village. We have amazing people who have purchased multiple plots of land and then come up with their own concepts. One of them is the Grove at Freedom Village, Georgia. See how that works? The Grove at Freedom Village, Georgia is 10 separate families that were pulled together by one very charismatic leader, Brother David Muhammad. And then he pulled and coordinated them to take advantage of our financing, to become citizens, and then set a second construct. Think of it like a high-end neighborhood in a city. You have your own HOA, you have your own meetings, you have your own things, but you are in the city. You're not outside of a city. You benefit from the city at large, and you benefit from being in it. Freedom Nation is the same way, and Freedom Village Georgia is built to be the same way. So it's a great thing to take advantage of, to think about coordinating your own groups to go into the Freedom Village Georgia. Within the village, though, you also need to think about your economy. This is where I'm going to talk about a little bit of the Freedom Citizen Teaming Agreement. See, as part of the Freedom Plan, we ask you things about the ideal businesses that you want to run. Or even if you just want to be like a remote worker, that's up to you. That's, no one is restricting you from that. If that's what you want to do, then there are tiers of freedom and you achieve the tier that's, that's beneficial to you. But for those that want to be completely independent, sometimes it's very hard to launch a business, especially if you've never done it. B, if you've only done it while you're working a job. Okay? C, if you didn't get as far as you like to with the one that you did build. So we are here as professional managers to ensure that you can build businesses. In that case, let's go back a little bit. There are things, core needs, that people within the Freedom Village have. And in those core needs, it's best to buy them from the people you know. And who better than another Freedom Citizen? One of the responsibilities of the Freedom Nation through the citizenry process, we gather needs of other people. We say, if you're a citizen, what are your needs? What can you do and what do you need? This helps us to build a list of exactly what's needed by the citizenry. Let's take cloud services, for example. See, that's probably not even on the first top of your head. But most people who have a business have to have a website. And those websites are there. And there's awesome platforms for putting your website up. But nine times out of 10, no, not even nine times out of 10, 10 times out of 10, those platforms are controlled by people who do not share your interests, nor do they want to necessarily see you succeed. When you have a website that you're selling from and it's online, it's sitting physically on a machine in somebody's space. That means that that person has the ability to walk directly to that machine and toggle the switch on or toggle the switch off. They can clean it if they like. They can keep it if they like. And if they clean all your stuff, they can send you a nice little letter that says sorry. Because when you signed up, you signed in the agreement that you were liable for the outcome, not them. You had to do your own backups. If the information goes in the wrong way, if it's used against you, your fault. You would be ludicrous to think someone owns something and doesn't have access to it. So in the case of cloud services, Freedom Nation provides cloud services. We have our own servers. We are the ones who walk up to the box and turn it on and off. The people you know, you can call on the phone and say, Brother Farouk, Hey, 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 I need to make sure my stuff is okay. Can you send somebody down there? I say, yes. Can they open up something? Yes. Hey, I got a problem. Can you just take it off the rack? Yes. So in those cases, we have our own cloud services. Now, we don't exist by ourselves. We need really skilled people to provide you support. We've created agreement 
with a company called Carbon Cubit. Now that's five absolutely amazing freedom citizens, brothers out of D.C., who at the extent are such experts that they have even top secret clearance on Department of Defense level. These are our top dudes. These are top guys. And they partnered with a teaming agreement with the Freedom Village as citizens to create a network operating center and a security operating center. So they took all that knowledge and partnered with us as project managers. We built a facility here in Kazakhstan because it was easier to access the labor and some of the other services that make it easy for you. We also put ourselves outside the jurisdiction of anyone who would harm your knowledge or your information or your data. And then we work with them to create this space out of their knowledge, their abilities, and our joint investments. This is open to every citizen. Partake of it. The way we drive the profit for them is from the citizen tree itself. And we would love to be in more businesses like this with our Freedom Nation citizens, where we help you analyze the needs of the citizens and you build the business to service them. In that, ensuring your income and ensuring that the goals of the whole are achieved more. And even though that sounds kind of tricky because you've probably been part of a program or you've seen a program that was doing something like that, it's this professional coordination from our firm that is making it happen and makes it real. And Carbon Cubit is an awesome example. Awesome example. So as a final part of this presentation about the Freedom Village and Freedom Nation, I hope at this point you understand that Freedom Nation is a professional organization established to create a systematic machine, an engine for taking black American, African American, so-called African American people and bringing them to the absolute height of freedom and interconnectedness with the ability to negotiate their own deals in the world, their own relationships, and to operate in autonomous structures that ensure the highest level of safety, peace, and prosperity. Now with all of that said, I'm gonna tell you about a very, very unique and very special project. Freedom Village Cargos. Cargos is a key space. It's the crossing town that straddles the Chinese and the Kazakh border. And you said, Farouk, what does that have to do with us? Everything. Did you know that almost 90% of African American businesses are purchasing products from China? Did you know that very few of us, and I mean really small, are raw material miners? That the majority of the top 100 black businesses in the country, almost all of them, are at best distributors or assemblers or added value manufacturers, meaning that they take something that's manufactured and add something to it. And they are completely subject to their supply chains. Completely. I am a big fan big fan, okay, of WeBuyBlack.com. Our young brother Sharif has done an excellent job marketing the necessity to buy from black people, for black people, buy from black people. But you know, I have this conversation, I had it with him, I have it with others, about the velocity of money and supply chain spending. And bear with me, these terms I'm introducing to you, I need you to know them. Velocity of money. Now, I just told you earlier in another video, another early part of this presentation, that there's only 
1.3 trillion U.S. dollars on the planet at any given time. But we've heard the statistics about the black dollar being worth a trillion dollars a year or this and that. How is that possible if that's the only amount of money? Well, it's called velocity. Money and spend, money supply and what it buys is exponential based on the velocity of money. Meaning, if you have $10 and the velocity of money is 10, you will create $100 of value with 10 bucks. A, simple. My $10 is spent buying something from somebody. And then he takes the $10 and buys something from somebody else, so forth and so on. In a supply chain, you give me $10 for the bike. I give $10 and split it between my rent and the bike parts. I give $10. He gives his $10 back and it comes back around and down, 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 down. This is the velocity of money. Currently, the velocity of the U.S. dollar is seven. So that dollar will change seven times. And if you want to find this stuff out, go to the Federal Reserve website. You can find it. They have all the stats just sitting there for you to read if you care. At a velocity of seven, it means that every dollar you spend with a black business at most will be spent twice. It'll go black to black. And then back to everybody else. And they will get five times more value out of it than you did. So for every dollar you work hard to spend and then spend with a black owned company, you provide five times more value for people who most likely care nothing about you. And in that five times, 90% of the time for black owned business, there is an Asian company involved. Don't you think it's time that we started tapping in directly to the source, slowing down that velocity to like two or three, your black hand to that manufacturer, to the person who's giving you whatever is there, but you know this person. You know where they get it from. You select your terms. You determine how much they get. Versus just showing up at the Canton Fair in Guangzhou and then making deals. For all of you who are business owners, who are selling stuff from overseas, you know exactly what I'm talking about. For all of you who don't, I'm hipping you to the game. So Freedom Village Cargos, despite all the limitations and the taxation and everything that the Trump presidency put on China, we are able to be in the autonomous region of free trade and free movement of people and goods. It means you can live in Freedom Village Cargos and walk across the, car the Chinese border with no visa. And you can bring things forth, back and forth with no tariffs and no taxation, as if it was in, in the Kazakhstan, as if it was in China, into Freedom Village Cargos, our construct, as if you were in China itself without being subject to Chinese laws and limitations. Now that might sound funny to you, but let me tell you what our counterparts are doing. As much as they are downing the Chinese bit, they have had 20 years, almost two to three decades of taking advantage of what comes out of this industrial powerhouse. And majority of what you have in your life, in your house, has something from those relationships. And even though there's all these other issues, they're leveraging and creating the relationships as they see fit. Guess who's not? You. When was the last time you had governmental authority to negotiate something at a significant level in China? Freedom Village Cargoes is here to fix that. Dyson, Tesla, all these big companies that you believe are just talking about made in America, have just built massive factories in Shanghai and Shenzhen. Shenzhen is a border town on the south of China that literally 80 to 90 percent of all the electronics that you have are done there, not manufactured, R&D. It means by sitting there, they're able to go back and forth and grab the components at the speed of thought and create new things that you then consume. How many black constructs in Shenzhen? None. 
How many Syrian? Multiple. How many American? Multiple. White American. Ain't no black people in those places. I've been there, saw it with my own eyes. But now, Freedom Village Cargos, on that border, has a better opportunity than anyone else. The ability to extract product outside the border and put it in a Freedom Village and directly on the largest dry port in the world, a massive economic corridor with 78% of all the shipments coming from China into Eurasia and down into other places coming through this one little pipeline visual from the top floor of the Freedom Village Cargo's buildings. I cannot think of anything to give us a better hold onto the manufacturing future of the world than Freedom Village Cargo's. Being freedom citizens, we have found a way to give the freedom citizens a way to afford this space, $1,500, to buy a 1,000 square foot unit. That's the down payment on the 0% five year financing. Five years, it's all just five years. $780 a month after that, and you own that space. We register your company in that special economic zone. And now whatever you want to manufacture, whatever you want your hands on, whatever research you want to do, whatever business you want to build, you can build from the core with your own relationships with China. And don't snuff at Kazakhstan. Kazakhstan has in abundance 10 of the key elements on the key chart, and it has every element on the elemental chart. One of the world's greatest producers of coal, Iron ore, oil, so much. You can do a lot here. A whole lot. And we're also starting to sell this space now. We're going to do it the same way. You come in as a citizen, you sign a teaming agreement, and you sign an agreement for us to acquire the property for you, and we handle everything. All the legal structures for you are in the U.S. with Freedom Village, Free Freedom Nation, and we are your representatives here. You come in, you occupy it. We will help you build that business. You build a teaming agreement with us. You take advantage of all the relationships, everything. And it's not something I'm just talking about. Carbon Cuban has already done this with their network operating center. We have other companies coming in now that are already doing this. And we want to do this for at least 500 citizens. The whole place is only a thousand units. And we're building it fast because we, we are the only Americans that have been allowed to build in this sector. The only. We are the first African Americans to build any construct in Central Asia. It is historical and amazing. It is a Freedom Village project and is only available to Freedom Citizens. That's one you absolutely want to take advantage of. Make sure you fill out the form you ask for that. So with this entire presentation, with letting you know all the wonderful things that we are doing, we will do, that will come in the future, I'm telling you that if it's in your heart to take true control over your life, to provide true freedom to your children and your grandchildren and your lineage, you would be almost crazy not to become a freedom citizen. It is a unique structure, a unique organization. It has the full dedication and commitment of my life and our resources. And it is open to African-Americans, so-called African-Americans, black Americans before anyone else on the planet Earth. And we have done everything we can to make it so you can be a powerhouse today and in the future to come. I ask you to join us as freedom citizens and let's get to work.